students of their safety as they reopen on Monday. We are assured that the airborne nature or whatever it is scientifically they are ascribed to will be suppressed. Let's bring you details of our stories and the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Mahama, says he will not recognize the Japan Royalties Mineral Agreement if he's elected in the 2020 general elections. Now, Parliament recently approved five agreements to create a special purpose vehicle in fulfillment of the Minerals Income Investment Fund Amendment, which is yet to be assented to by the president. Ejapa will operate as a private sector entity to raise funds from the capital market both locally and internationally to finance infrastructural projects. In an interview with Wazor TV, Mr. Mahama said rights for the funds from mineral royalties in the country should have been assigned to the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. Now, former President Mahama also said he will investigate the botched PDS deal should he be re-elected. It's obvious that persons very close to the, to the president, related to the president, were involved in structuring the PDS um, uh, deal. And um, we've had audio of them in telephone conversations, you know, talking about the shareholding and all that. We've all heard it. I mean, so there's enough evidence to investigate uh, uh, PDS. And the people of Ghana n need to know what happened because this was a situation in which the assets of a state-owned company were being handed over to a private company. As I speak today, for the period that PDS collected money when they were running uh, the ECG, that money that runs in billions of uh, Ghana cities has not been accounted for. I mean, people cannot just pocket state monies and just walk away free with it. The people of Ghana deserve to know what happened in PDS. The Japan is unfolding the same thing. The money laundering laws do not allow us, even as individuals, to hide our money in tax havens. So if even as individuals we are not allowed to hide our money in tax havens, why will the government of Ghana mortgage our gold royalties to a private company in which we have 51% shares, some shady individuals we don't know have taken 49% shares. On what basis do they take those shares? And they've gone to register in Jesse, an offshore tax haven, so that they hide the identity of the shareholders. Government of Ghana, even though the royalties are ours, cannot control that company. Meanwhile, we have vehicles we can use here. We have the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. If you, if you assigned the royalties, our gold royalties, to the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, which is a 100% controlled Ghanaian entity, it can do exactly the same thing that you want Ejapa to do. Ejapa is a very shady deal. And I'm saying if I become president, I will not respect that agreement. It is, it is a, a theft of uh, uh, Ghanaian's you know, uh, royalties. And it is made to benefit just a few people. Ghanaians cannot accept this. We won't accept that agreement. We do not accept that government of Ghana should invest our royalties in an offshore tax haven. Let them invest it in a company that is transparent. We can see the beneficial owners of who the company are. And in the best case scenario, use a government of uh, Ghana vehicle. Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund is supposed to be our sovereign wealth fund. If you assign our gold royalties to it, the Ghana, infrastructure investment, uh, the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund can raise those same monies that you want. In any case, we get almost $200 million a year. You want to go and borrow $500 million and tie our gold royalties for 15 years to a company that we don't know who owns, uh, who owns the company and in a tax haven. It's against the money laundering rules, and the president and his uh, cohorts should not be doing well, this kind of thing. Now, the MPP at the launch of its manifesto over the weekend promised to build an airport and harbor for the people of the central region should the party be retained in power. The move is intended to facilitate business and travel to the region and also create jobs for inhabitants. Although some residents of the central region have welcomed the news, some also hope that this will not remain a political talk. City News correspondent Carvey Stete has more in this report. The new patriotic party launched its manifesto on Saturday, August 22nd, 2020. Vice President Dr. Mahamudu Baumia 
outline excerpts of the manifesto. Key among the highlights is the building of an airport and a harbor for the people of the central region. According to him, the project will boost tourism and development in the region. In March this year, some angry residents of Cape Coast took to the streets to protest in a no airport, no vote agenda, pushing for the construction of an international airport which they believe will create more jobs and reduce unemployment in the region. President Akufuado, responding to the demands of the people in March, noted that the Ministry of Aviation will put things in place to decide whether the region needs an airport. He also hinted that a similar process has begun in the eastern region where he hails from to ascertain whether an airport is needed there. Some residents of Cape Coast have been sharing their thoughts on the development. I step in the right direction because talking of Cape Coast, um, the first capital city of our nation, not just that, um, when we talk of various um, <coughs> tourist attraction centers, we have so many of them here. And so if there is an airport, I think um, it will boost the um, the the process the tourism um, sector here yeah certainly they are going to employ workers um, aviation sectors even the air hostels and the people yeah a, a whole lot <laughs> I think it, it's it's very good yeah I think it's a step in the right direction because the youth have always been craving for jobs 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 and once the airport and the, the port is being established it's going to boost the economic activity within Cape Coast and maybe within the central United environs. Because if, when you take Cape Coast, for example, when the university goes down, the polytechnics and other tertiary institutes, when it goes down, the economic activity reduces. And I don't know whether if you look around, you see people selling water, the, the university does not permit it, but still people come in to sell some of these things. So if the airport, the port is, is being established, as the government is saying, if they are able to implement it and they do it, I think the economic activity in Cape Coast will boost and people are going to get jobs because every youth want job. When the president actually and the manifesto drafting committee actually put together that they're going to build uh, airports and then a harbor for the people of Cape Coast, I think it's a good news because sometimes um, somebody want to move from Cape Coast to Accra, do an urgent um, you know, attend to some emergencies and then you have to go through tough traffic and all that. So probably I think if there is an, an intracity flight, somebody can move from Cape Coast to Accra within some few minutes. I think it's a plus. So we're just looking forward that um, the MPP who just launched their manifesto will stick to their promise and then deliver that to Cape Coast. And then the sense of the harbor too, I think uh, it's long overdue. It's long overdue. For Isaac Bassel, he hopes the promise is not just a political talk. Adding that, if completed, the project will reduce the carnage on the Accra Cape Coast stretch, which is known for road crashes in the country. Airport here, if only it's not going to be a political talk and it's going to be a reality, then I think it is a very laudable uh, uh, thing to do. It has been a long overdue. Look, Cape Coast was the first capital, and if there is no uh, airport here, look at the tourists. To, uh, uh, what do you call it? Tourists who come to visit the uh, 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 what do you call it? The monuments and all these things that we have here. Taking a car to here, the road accident, the traffic, and all these things. So if if the airport comes here, it is going to help develop the, uh, the the region, not only Cape Coast but the region as well. We still stay in the central region because junior high school students in the Dakwa Bentuma community in the Ewutu Senya West District of the central region are forced to travel close to five kilometers to access junior high school education. Now, this is as a result of the lack of a junior high school facility in the community. Students who don't have means to travel five kilometers to neighboring schools on a daily basis are forced to learn a trade. Central Regional Correspondent Kabul Stete has more. For students who have the desire to continue with their junior high school education, it will take passion to be able to trek close to five miles to access junior high school education in neighboring towns such as Papase, Ofako, Kasua, among others. 
aside trekking to access junior high school education at some neighboring communities, parents who want their children to get junior high school education after completing primary school in Awutu Bintum must have the financial muscle to be able to support their children on daily basis as they go to school. It will also be an added advantage for one to have a relative in the bigger communities nearby for his or her child to stay with during the school week. School children who do not have the means to continue with their education in the community are forced to learn a trade as a means of survival. Students who spoke to City News say majority of their colleagues will be forced to quit junior high school education if an urgent solution is not found. Some of my friends who did not continue the school, some people will be going to farm, some people will be sitting at home selling. We always suffer a lot in the school. The drugs, uh, even the teachers, the teachers even suffer than less the children. When you are in the class, then you see this lady coming to the class. When it is running, unless you run to the nursery block to go and learn. If you are in DHS, you have to walk to a long place before you go to school. It's affecting us. One government to build another school. The community earmarked some land for future development of the school, but that too has been encroached upon. For the community members, it is their hope that despite the encroachment, a solution is found soon. As I say, oh, I am for that to turn in. As be any one or the atoma estate development for a monomaton to us, I said, you do so glavo. In the other, as a cry, a door so crampon, a bad time in Nibi, says, yeah, yeah, you will be squee. My friend will be a honoma, or more three years as one or more called Jesses too. You need Jesses too. Says, yeah, I say, says, I'm yammy no cat in the barber called Jesses too. I saw a coffer call, the best re, say, one more more than one wine. Now, my friend, I will fear no cool school, Kwanwa, and that's who, yeah, yeah, chichi, my friend, war, Kwansu. Of a corner, fast myers, no monantico, Tamama, Sisiano, you have Oma bread, and that's what comes by you to be cross old, Damadam, my monco. My friend will be none to a quack faqua when your car and some portrait at Nana. I must say, yes, school in my head. Yes, school, papa. The street chief executive for Ewutu Senya West, Stephen Kwame Kwe, indicated that although they made plans to build structures for the school. The encroachment prevented the assembly from carrying out the project. And they were here uh, with the director of district director of education, and then we gave them a tax, uh, including the assembly member. So at a point that we want to do something, actually the land that they put up that primary school uh, is is the land is not for them; it's for orphan core people. So. They thought they could put up the GHS block just on the same land. And the people came and then blocked the place. To the extent that they've put in up a, a washroom and then other toilet facilities, they, they, they pulled them down and it became an issue. So I also called the assembly member to meet with the opinion leaders to have a negotiation with the FANCO chiefs, those who own the land. If they can get us parcel of land there to uh, acquire, we will do it so that our children will not suffer. As soon as the uh, land is a place is given to them, whilst we are also behind it, we will do what is expected of us. So here at in the Ewutu Senya West yes. municipality. As you can see behind me, this is the junior high school structure students in this community use. Now, they are however calling on government and authorities to come and build them a befitting structure. Reporting for City News, I am Calvis Tete. Access to basic educational infrastructure still remains a luxury in many public schools across the country, and this tends to adversely affect provision of quality education in those areas. At St. Monica's Anglican Junior High School at Bonri in the Ashanti region, for instance, the school's classroom block has been in a dilapidated state for about a decade, as the school also complains of access to other basic infrastructure such as toilet facilities 
City News' Fatih Aminu Ibrahim reports. St. Monica's Anglican School is one of the only two junior high schools that serve the town of Bonre in the Ashanti region. Bonre is famously known for the making of kinti and therefore is visited by many tourists across the world. The positives associated with the town's tourism and cultural heritage cannot be said about its education. A visit by City News shows that the schools serving the town are not in good condition, as the St. Monica's JHS has been in a terrible state for almost a decade now. When City News caught up with the Parents and Teachers Association chairman of the school, Mr. Gabriel Osei Ousu, he narrated that the school was started by the Anglican Church. According to him, the church later saw the need to upgrade the school but could not find the resources to complete it and later handed it to the government and as such, the school became a public school. Mr. Gabriel Osei also said the school currently faces some challenges, which include inadequate desks. Schools are expected to resume soon, and with COVID-19, all schools are supposed to adhere to the safety protocols, particularly the practice of social distancing in classrooms. But Mr. Osei also believes this will be difficult to do as the school does not have enough desk to ensure this. Due to the poor nature of the JHS classroom block, Form 3 students who have returned to campus to write their BEC have resorted to using the primary school classroom block. He led the team to a bushy area where, according to him, a pit was dug years ago for a toilet facility to be built but the unavailability of the needed resources halted the development. The PTA chairman expressed worry over the nature of their school's urinal. He added that students have to go home or visit the nearest public toilet facility any time they need to visit the washroom as the school lacks a toilet facility. <laughs> The assembly member for the area also called on government and other benevolent individuals to come to the aid of the school. Sebi saw the school no pan ya kase. Sebi nipa or tea school no wanko school than what tea school no na school na bedru sabri ya and of course I'm Areho send a summer to me sorry no be huna and go be soon is you pa. And until me the magistrate the enemy and sat to me and say, I'm say, what do you mean assembly manna? Me tiyan ma chire abro chire fwa gana fwa, nana do dan kwa yiku fwa do, education fwa. Mada wuru mwa 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 yiku kwa yiku tuwa kwa yiku 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 kwa some recalcitrant residents have been using their classrooms as their toilet facility. He said they are sometimes the stench even after cleaning the mess. Because the school is uncompleted and doesn't have any gate or any window. Maybe Monday, when we have come to school, somebody maybe from outside or we don't know, come to the school. But when they decorate here, he then split it onto the board. And when it comes to it, we couldn't learn because of that. They should come and complete the school building for us and do whatever they want to do. Maybe gates and windows. We need that thing. City News sources say the Municipal Education Directorate has been informed of the school's condition, 
but no action has so far been taken to help address it. When City News visited the office of the Municipal Chief Executive for Ejoso, Madam Sewa Dechi, she declined to speak to the issue on record, claiming that she was not aware of the challenges of the school as she has not received any formal complaint from the assembly member for the area. This uncompleted structure is among the many challenges facing this school. They are therefore appealing to authorities to come to their aid to make sure that the school is completed and then they find a better place to ease themselves. For City News, I am Fati Amini Ibrahim, Bonri. Still on education and authorities of Takaradi Technical University and the Holy Child College of Education say they are ready for the expected large numbers of continuing students come 24th August. This follows Zoom Lion's extensive disinfection of the two campuses on Sunday. This is news is Akwese Jainim has more. The extensive disinfection exercised by Zoom Lion on the campuses of Takwadi Technical University and the Holy Child College of Education was in line with the presidential directive to all tertiary institutions to disinfect before reopening for continuing students from 24th August. The acting vice registrar of Takwadi Technical University, Joseph Ishen, during the exercise told City News that disinfection by Zoom Lion is a confident booster to the expected increased numbers of both students and lecturers to return on the 24th. This is an, uh, 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 a way of ensuring that the whole place is disinfected for students to come in. When the president gave the directive that um, schools will be open next week, we we'll also have to put everything in place to ensure that when they come, they have a free environment to live in. The arrangement for TTU is that the second years will come from 24th. We we'll have the MTech second year, but the BTech second year, we we'll have the civil engineering second year, we we'll have the um, all HND second year who are coming from 24th. So this is the arrangement that is made for now. And then on the 5th of October, by which time they would have left, finished the exam and left, then the first year will come to complete the second semester for 2019-2020 academic year. Because we are not in normal title, like the president said, we cannot put all of them together. So we are making arrangements such that when they come, we'll be able to observe the social distancing in the lecture halls. How? So within that period, if they are able to finish and leave, we'll still have space for the first year to come. The Western Regional Vector Control Manager for Zoom Lion, Samuel Edu, who supervised the exercise explained to CC News the extent of the disinfection exercise. The government has already made it clear that until the disease in which we find ourselves now, I mean the COVID-19, is warded off. Disinfection is going to be regular and we have done it for the third time now. The scope covers every, every facility that the university has. Talking of calls of residents, talking of classrooms, lecture theaters, uh, bungalows, and pure at any other facility. That is our job for today. And we'll do it in such a way that we we'll build the confidence, we we'll both staff and students, we we'll have a conducive atmosphere. Now, authorities at the Catholic University College of Ghana at Fiapre in the Suyani West municipality of the Bono region say all is set to welcome all continuing students back to campus. This is after classrooms and offices were disinfected by Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. City News' Michael Sapunfum observed the disinfection exercise and reports. The disinfection exercise at the Catholic University College of Ghana exercise was carried out by Zoom Lion Ghana Limited. Lecture theaters offices were all disinfected in the process. The institution is expected to welcome 1,500 students back to campus on Monday, August 24. Various COVID-19 safety protocols have also been put in place to ensure the safety of both staff and students. On a personal level, at the institutional level, at the community level, we have that security and as far as COVID-19 spread is concerned because once the place is fumigated, we are assured that the airborne nature or whatever it is scientifically they are ascribed to will be suppressed. This very exercise we are witnessing today is part of the assurance that we are ready. Now after today, 
as you must have observed at the entrance, you saw one of our security guards who took your, your temperature. You saw Veronica bucket at the entrance. You saw disposable towels, everything in as far as COVID is concerned. That is not the only place. All around on campus, you'll find the same protocols being observed. In fact, if you go to the lecture theaters, you will find that the furniture have been arranged according to the COVID protocols. Now, as we speak, if you look right behind you, you see that we have offloaded some chairs and tables outside. That tells you that we are not doing business as usual. We have arranged all chairs according to the protocols and the social distance uh, I mean, protocols. So we are fully ready to receive our students and welcome them to Catholic University once back. The manager in charge of Zoom Lion Ghana Limited for the Bunu, Bunu East and Half Regions, Esther Bayate, also spoke to City News after the disinfection exercise. Um, as we are all aware, since the uh, emergence of COVID-19, the government of Ghana uh, has used different strategies to ensure that we get to the spread of COVID-19. And uh, uh, one of it was to close down uh, the tertiary, the primary, GSS, all the schools in Ghana. But we've realized that with uh, the collaboration with the government and the other stakeholders to disinfect our schools, disinfect our markets, and then using other protocols involved, we've been able to control the spread and even reduce it. Um, so for that reason, the government has found it prudent to let our children come back to school. So it is just in the right direction for us to disinfect again, because these are people who will be coming from different uh, regions of Ghana and even beyond Ghana. So there is a need for us to prepare the grounds and then wait for the opening of the schools. That's why today you've seen us here. And we are doing this exercise in all tertiary institutions, including the private universities, colleges of education, and then other uh, institutions that will be opening very soon. Michael Sapoli from for City News. Let's go to the Eastern Regional Management of the Kofrida Technical University has assured parents whose wards are returning to the school to continue academic work. Obvious safety, according to management, continues strict adherence to all the safety protocols by the final year students, teaching and non-teaching staff, has contributed largely to the university not recording a single case of COVID-19 since the academic activities resumed for final year students some months ago. City News' Eastern Regional Correspondent, Neil Ni Amati Kanaku, who witnessed the disinfection exercise by Zoomline Ghana Limited on the campus, reports that all is set for the continuing students to return to school. The country's biggest waste management company, Zoom Lion Ghana, began Sunday's disinfection exercise at exactly 11 a.m. after the final year weekend students who completed school today finished their final exams. The exercise, which saw the disinfection of all classrooms, various faculties, laboratories, offices, administration block, and all hostels and bungalows is the third successive disinfection exercise carried out by Zoom Lion to get the campus safe for both students and staff. The Regional Vector Control Officer of Zoom Lion, Maxwell Agbosu, has been speaking to City News about today's exercise. Uh, we are actually disinfecting again the pandemic, the COVID-19, which is all over around us. And so the exercise aim at keeping the spread and make the place better for the students as they are reopening very soon. We are using a, an international approved chemical, which is tried and tested and very efficient against the virus and uh, the target areas we know we are looking at contact surfaces where human beings actually get in contact with the viruses and so you look at the chairs the door handles the reels the beds and the classroom table and chairs and everywhere we can see around that it is a potential site the entrance gate and elsewhere that we can find that they are quite a potential place for the virus to thrive over 4,000 final year students who came in to complete 12 weeks of academic activity and two weeks of examination have all gone through successfully without a single case of COVID-19 according to management. The Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Davis Kofi Esuman, says management is again ready to welcome the over 3,500 continuing students. Indeed, we are very ready. Ever since this COVID came, if you have been to our campus, you will notice how strict we are for students to people to enter and to leave. 
you wash your hands several times within there. So we have been ready ever since. Right. And right. because of right. our readiness and the way we put things together, the final year center came, we never experienced any much problem. And I believe we are going to continue with that hand washing, uh, taking of the temperatures, and the use of hand sanitizers. Professor David Kofia Suman, who was very appreciative of government's support and Zoom Lions' continuous effort to keep the surroundings safe, assured parents of the safety of the awards who are returning to school. At least we have a story to tell. The final year student came and we never experienced any problem. Not one single signal that somebody was even sick or something. All of them have gone through. They were here for almost 10 weeks. We got the longest period to stay on campus for the student. They were here for 10 weeks for classes and two weeks for examination. And in all this, we've been able to go through without any problem. We never experienced any sign of COVID-19 on the campus. They're still watching the city newsroom. When we come back, Upper East Regional Health Directorate warns residents to remain alert despite recording zero COVID-19 cases. We have that story and more, don't go away. World Solutions, forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry, engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade Kejebil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries, world-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejebil, of the Takrade Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email inquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. Welcome back. Now, the Upper East Regional risk recording COVID-19 cases again if efforts are not made to ensure strict compliance to COVID-19 safety protocols. Even though the region has successfully managed to treat and discharge all COVID-19 active cases in the region, residents' disregard for wearing nose and face masks could plunge the region back to its days of active COVID-19 cases and its attendant consequences. Here is a report. The Upper East Region recorded its first case of COVID-19 involving a pregnant woman on April 3, 2020. Subsequently, the region recorded a total of 282 active cases of COVID-19 between March and July 2020. While two people died before testing positive, one absconded from a health facility in Navrongo in the Kasanan and Kana municipal, but the remaining 279 cases have been successfully treated and discharged from the COVID-19 treatment center at the Bogatanga Regional Hospital. 
Upper East Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. Winfred Ofosu, shared his outfit success in the fight against COVID-19 and its sustainability with City News. At the moment, we do not have any active case. Uh, and that has been over the past one month. Because all the confirmed cases are recovered and they've all been discharged. The subsequent samples that were submitted, which have been tested, have all turned out to be negative. Mm -hmm. And that's why, as of now, we still do not have any active. But in spite of the successes chalked, it appears most residents in the Boatanga municipality of the region are grossly flouting the COVID-19 safety protocols. Certain news is checks on the principal streets of Bogatanga and public places such as markets and lorry parks uncovered absolute disregard for social distancing protocol. Majority of residents, though aware of the protocols, deliberately refused to wear their nose or face mask, and those who even have the mask never bother to wear them. Some residents covered their faces with their hands when they were captured by City News for not adhering to the safety protocols. Some residents told City News that they were not enthused to wear their nose or face mask after the region was declared of having no active COVID-19 case. The Ministry of Health, they said that, that the virus are not more in Upper East. So uh, that's why we are not using it again. So that's the reason why we are not wearing it. I said I'm just tired of the news man and then uh, 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 I'm, I'm tired of this COVID-19 and all that be done. So whatever happens is normal. I'll just take it that way. We are very exciting and then maybe we are moving freely and then no more like it wasn't like first. You wash your hands frequently. You are always in nose marks. Even breathing sometimes is even a problem to breathe. Me, for instance, when I, when I wear that nose marks, it's hardly to breathe. But because of the because of the pandemic, I had to use it, whether rain or sunshine. In fact, I'm very happy that we don't have COVID-19 in Upper East. Later, when I heard that we don't have COVID anymore in the Upper East region, uh, then I think the Ministry of Health is going to have to maintain the measures that are required to fight it. Currently I'm not on a mask, but I'm sure this will remind me that I'll have to be on a mask and then also maintain the social distance. But Dr. Winfred Ofosu described the attitude of residents flouting the safety protocols as unfortunate. Other than that, strict adherence to the safety protocols remains key to sustaining the gains against COVID-19. If because we do not have an active case currently in the treatment center, uh, people think that or uh, misunderstood it, that we do not have the virus in the region, then that is unfortunate uh, because we certainly do have the virus. Only that the people in which who are carrying the virus may be asymptomatic, uh, and day in day out we have people traveling out of the region and some traveling into the region. Some may be coming from uh, uh, communities where the virus is still being transmitted. <clears throat> so we will entreat everyone, I mean, to come not to wear the mask. There is absolute disregard for the wearing of nose masks here in the Bogatanga municipality. Much as some deliberately refuse to put on their nose masks, for those who even have it, don't want to put it on. Perhaps the police should step in to ensure compliance in this municipality, in order not to record any case of COVID. For City News, I am Frederick Aouni. Boga Tanga.
Let's move to the Ashanti region because a new KJTM market there is being equipped with facilities that will provide essential services to make trading at the place conducive. Now, according to the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly, the existence of facilities such as a police post and a fire station at the market will help cater for emergencies that may arise as traders go about the activities now the assembly has facilitated the establishment of a clinic at the market to provide health care for traders. City News's correspondent Hafiz Sujani has more. There is a daily increase in the number of people who visit the redeveloped Kijitia market to engage in buying and selling with the high patronage of the facility by people from within and outside the Ashanti region. The assembly says there was a need to set up a clinic there. The Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly set up a team which was headed by the president of the Ghana Medical Association to select a company that will run the clinic at the market. Kumasi Mayor Osei ACB Entry says the opening of the clinic came at the right time in the midst of the pandemic. We are of the opinion that with this facility closer to them, it is going to help them improve their welfare and their health. In any era of pandemic, what is key is education. Well, first of all, you should understand how to attract the virus and how you can stay clear out of the virus. And this is also going to be part of their work. It's not only to sit here. They have to advise the people for the people to know even the symptoms of the virus for the people to know. And also the distance, social distancing. These are all going to be part of their responsibility. That is a social responsibility. Managers of the clinic have been taxed by the assembly to carry out routine health sensitization for shop owners and traders. Chief Executive Officer for the Anyam Clinic assures the facility will serve the purpose for which it was established. Population include, you know, underprivileged people, underserved people, people like the Kayais, the truck, truck drivers and their maids, you know, um, petty traders, hawkers, hawkers, truck pushers and so forth, you know. These are people who are likely to come to hospital without any insurance, you know. So it has become very, very necessary to actually set, this, set up this clinic to take care of all the people working here and at the same time to take care of the disadvantaged people. The clinic has consulting rooms, a laboratory, an emergency room, a pharmacy, and a scan room. Some traders welcomed the establishment of the clinic at the Kedetia market. <laughs> From the KJTA market, I am half his Tijani for City News. You're still watching City News, Jumon, City TV. I am Umaru Sandamadu. Vivian Kai, local. Still ahead on the City News Room, we'll tell you about a physically challenged woman with three children at Nakpandu in the Northeast region who has survived the dark period of cultural practice where girls in a family were used to pay for the wives of their brothers. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Tune in to The Point of View this and every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. as I, Bernard Avale, 
get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. Significantly, and we will do 250 million Ghana cities. We built up the stabilization fund. And the bulk of the 250 million US dollars, same figures, 250 million cities, 250 million dollars, I can say was significantly what we put in with one oil field. So there was a lack of preparation. The sinking fund, we use the sinking fund because you prepare for the things that affect the economy. So when I remember I got the conclusion, he, so he took one of them, he told me that, well, if you take this, I am sure that you will get some running stomach. But if you do get that running stomach, it's part of the efficacy of the medication. And for me, it was telling that indeed this man knew that he was selling very quack medicine to people. That in fact, the rate of increase of people on the voter, re uh, voter regional road is actually declining. The, uh, the uh, relative rate of increase. Yes, yes. So on what basis can you make an argument that there's some grand plot cooked somewhere in Lomi to bring in both to Togolese to come and destabilize Ghanaian politics by somehow distorting outcomes? That cannot be true. I mean, the fact that you have um, um, comatose banks owned by Ghanaians does not serve you any good where people's monies were in jeopardy. But what we did in our intervention was not only to then increase the capital so that we had stronger banks, we also created um, gaps. Remember, The Point of View is live every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. only on City TV. The Point of View is powered by Airtel Tigo. Have you heard that Airtel Tigo calls from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. and Airtel Tigo money transfers are now free on new sims? Now you know. Airtel Tigo. Life is simple. And Lydia Contraceptive. With Lydia, you truly decide. Welcome back to the City Newsroom. Now, Tang John Labrick is a physically challenged woman with three children at Nankwanduri in the Northeast region. She survived the dark period of cultural practice where girls in the family were used to pay for the wives of their brothers, fathers, or uncles in their families. Our correspondent Maxwell Souk sat with her and reports that she has defied the odds to keep her head above water despite the challenges life has thrown at her. This morning at Nakanduri and Tanjong is heading to a vegetable farm. She is not supposed to per her situation, but she has no option. When Tanjong Labek was a teenager, she fell sick and became paralyzed. After spending more than half a year on her sick bed at the hospital, she did not get the needed treatment, a situation that landed her in the present state. In times past, most societies in northern Ghana practice wife exchanges where young girls in a family were married off to families where their fathers, uncles or brothers married from. Tanjong became a victim of this cultural practice. Tanjong 
ke pa o nga po ya pa ke tru o nga po bamba le ya de pente belenjin ke pang belenjin pang ke tren na na ya to pa re eh ti li li yo ya pente len tenan force e le ke ke lo njo nga le te force nan so bon jo ya ala wa la len ti Tanjong's marital life with her first husband was brief but full of regrets she explains ba je le san na ndokta kalanyina <laughs> She believes that with an advanced medical care she will be able to walk freely without any aid. Mokaya dana li ti tarana ke yemiru pugul lepo tarana ke lama ke dunna nan ke dani ka sa fe somma. Wa dokta mbay be eh kama bon chiana be pia ke ngala nan li ti ke san to na po dokta mba nan ba agotu taya nan so ba nga legli ka legli mba ka na a po nga pul la lokwa ki ka la bo fi ya handu an dokta nan ke nwa kan dia legli ke ti ba eh le pa ke nga mo ka yara nan ye nu ye melo e pung ke dokta mba pung en sa la la fi wa After harvesting the vegetables, Tanjong heads to the market to sell them. She tells me all that she's carrying will fetch her 10 CDs which will cover her transportation, buy a bowl of grains that she will meal, as well as ingredients to be used in preparing her meal for the day. She's making an appeal to Ghanaians to help her buy a wheelchair that can move her about to sell her vegetables and live a better life. Well, that's it for today's edition of the City Newsroom. Log on to our website, citynewsroom.com, for more stories. Subscribe to City TV on YouTube for more exclusive video contents from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and Go TV channel 182. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And my name is Umaru Sanda Amado. Thank you for watching.